Hey YouTube, um, this is a continuation video of uh, one of my previous tutorials, uh, of Visual Basic, uh, the one where I told you how to uh, make a side-scrolling effect uh, by using the auto-scroll feature and moving the elements around you rather than your character itself. Um, and it was requested that I make a follow-up video uh, showing how to make the character jump and um, be able to like fall off like the map like through holes and through the ground and stuff. So that is what I'm going to do. It shouldn't take too long. So this is where we are right now. This is just the uh, basic side-scrolling uh, sort of setup that I ended with on my previous video. So if you're not uh, quite caught up here, or you still don't understand how I did this, you can just go watch my other video. All it does is if I hold this right uh, key... Um, sorry, my computer uh, makes it run a little slow these three objects come to us like that. So it gives the effect that there's uh, side scrolling, but there's really not. It's just that uh, everything else is moving. So um, let's get started. First of all, I'm just going to move these um, I'm going to move these obstacles back a little because um, it takes a little while to get to them. Set them back like you know a thousand. Set this to two, then this one's going to be four, and then that should make it a lot quicker for us to get there. All right, so the first part that was requested, um, we're gonna work on jumping. So as you can see down here, I have a jump timer. It doesn't do anything yet, uh, but that's what we're going to work on. So uh, just make yourself a jump timer. I set the interval to ten and let's code it alright so um, actually we're gonna hold off on this one for just a second um, and we're actually not going to have a jump timer so actually get rid of that for just a second um, let's rename jump to TMR up and make a second timer and call that TMR down. Uh, intervals can both be 10. But what we're going to do is in our up timer, let's have a static variable. Static x is integer equals 0. And we'll say um, if x is less than uh, 20. So it'll go 20 times. Uh, then we're going to say pick player, which is the name of our character, dot top minus equals uh, 6. So that's a pretty fast jump, but uh, yeah. And then we'll say else, so if it's greater than 20, then tmr up dot enabled equals false. He's going to stop jumping. If I could type. Um, we're going to enable our down timer, so he obviously starts moving down. And let's reset this variable back to zero, so when we want to use up again, we can, in fact, use it. And also in my code, I've made this uh, this variable called BLN jumpable or jump, or whatever. <laughs> and this is going to allow the character to jump. Now, the reason behind this is because... Um, if you jump, like if you hit the space bar to jump like four times in a row, then that's going to, you know, make your characters kind of float up in the air. So what you want to do is you want to make them be able to jump once and not be able to jump again until they come back down. So what I've done in my key code right here, I've said select case, uh, keys.space. Then I say if BLN jump equals true, then it will enable the up timer. And then it'll take that variable and it'll set it to false. So you can only jump once. But then what we're going to do is as soon as he touches the ground, we're going to reset that variable to true so you can do it again. So that's that. Alright, so there's our up timer. And let me, let's program the down timer. Now the dime, down timer is going to be a little different. It's just going to be a pick player uh, dot top plus equals six. And I think we're just going to leave it like that just for now. And yeah. So we're going to need to make our ground. So for that, we're just going to add a picture box. 
we can name it pick brown and set its back color to something that looks, you know, like grass. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna send it to back. Uh, that just puts it behind all the picture boxes we have currently. See how the black one kind of clips over that one. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put that ground like so. Um, and we got to make sure that our other objects are under the ground as well. So you can see this ground right here. All right. Um, and then if you were paying attention in my last video, uh, we will have to make the ground move as well. So we're just going to add that to this array we have under our uh, left and right timers. One sec. Did I not name this pick ground? Oh, I misspelled it. That's why. All right, there we go. Can't believe I misspelled ground. Okay, so now that's fine. Make sure it's in both arrays, otherwise it will only work in one direction. Um, if our team are down, we're gonna say if pick player dot bounds dot intersects with pick. Uh, hold on, excuse me. I like it when Visual Basic, you know, kind of just types it for me. Intersects with pick ground dot bounds. And this is um, sort of an... Uh, I don't know what the right word uh, to use is, but I like to sometimes use the dot top references and dot left for... Um, Collision detection sometimes because bounds can be a little weird, but we're just going to keep it simple for now since there's not too many things going on. So if pick player dot bounds intersects with pick ground dot bounds, then obviously we want him to stop falling. So we're going to disable this timer, and we need to make BLN jump that that uh, boolean that lets us jump. We need to set that back to true so we can again in fact jump. So now I'm going to run this and see if we can successfully jump and then touch the ground and stop falling. Alright, so here is our playing field. You can see the characters come to us and the ground moves successfully with it. So let's jump and we did not come back down. And that is because this is a mistake that I make uh, common and I'm sure most of you do too. In our up timer right here, we have this variable and that says while is less than 20, but nowhere in here did we increment it. So you need to add that x plus equals 1 statement right there in that timer up. Now that should give us the correct uh, output that we're looking for. So we can move and we can jump. And I'm sure you can hear me uh, hitting my space key, but it only lets us jump once until we hit that ground again, which is exactly what we want. And then here's the thing. You can walk off the floor and you can get back on, which is not what we want, but if you jump, you obviously fall off because you haven't hit the ground yet. So we're just going to make it so that... Um, if you're not touching the ground, you start to fall, which is going to be pretty simple. Uh, all we're going to need to do is we're going to have one more timer, and this is going to be we're just going to name it TMR check because that's all it's going to do. It's just going to check uh, things in our game, and so we're going to set that to true right off the bat, um, and set it to one interval. So it's going to be checking all the time, and you can put whatever you want in here. So uh, let me just make the ground a little bigger. Um, so inside inside our TMR check, all we're going to need to do is we're going to say if not pick player dot bounds dot intersects with pick ground dot bounds then. So it's basically the same thing that we said under our TMR down, except not. So if you're not touching it, then we're going to enable TMR down. 
that means you're going to start falling. Um, and that will lead to some uh, small things, small problems. Let me just uh, run this so you can see it. So hopefully, uh, okay, yeah, one more thing. Uh, that also poses a small problem, but we can easily fix that. Um, as soon as you jump, you're technically not touching the ground anymore, so it's going to enable that. So we're going to say, if not pick player dot bounds uh, intersects with pick ground up bounds, and tmr jump or tmr up dot enabled equals false. So that means if we're not in the jumping state, then it'll do it. Otherwise, it shouldn't. So let's make sure we can jump. And so there we can jump. And if we go off here, we fall. You can see that. Um, one more little thing is I'm going to try and fall, but as soon as I fall, I'm going to try and clip back into the ground. And see, you can see how I kind of caught myself, and it looks a little awkward. You can leave it like that if you want for your game, but that could pose problems like this where you're like half on the screen. And all you have to do to fix that is you have to say that um, if, hold on. Okay. If pick player dot balance intersects with pick ground, that's fine. And we need to say if pick player oh, excuse my typing. Pick player dot top plus pick player dot height. So this is a bit of the uh, more math side of Visual Basic. Um so basically with that we're simulating the bottom of the thing of the player top plus is height so if pick player dot top plus pick player dot height is greater than um, pick ground dot top um, I don't know dot top you know plus I don't know we'll, we'll say 10 so we'll give we'll give you a little bit of room to work with there so pick player dot balance dot intersects with pick ground dot balance and pick player dot top plus pick player dot height is greater than pick ground dot top plus ten, then he'll stop jumping. So what's that saying is if you land on it and your character isn't like falling off the map, then it's gonna stop. Otherwise, you know, if you've fallen off the map like half the height of your player, then you're pretty much just gonna keep falling off. So let's make sure jumping still works. Jumping still works fine. And, you know, my character's not jumping that high, but you can just change that with, like, how many times the uh, timer actually runs. So I'm going to try and fall off and catch myself. And I still manage to do it. Um, oh. Oh. This should be less than, not greater than. Make sure jumping still works. And then try and fall off here. Uh, that was not too good. I kind of slipped up. Let me try and run it one more time just so you can uh, see it. So we can jump and then but we cannot catch ourselves if we fall off. Again, that's a, you know, a personal choice for your game. You can have it, you cannot, but I just threw it in there just so if you do want to have it, you can see sort of, you know, how you do it. Um, so that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, and if you have any other requests, just send me a message on YouTube and I will uh, most likely be able to do a tutorial video or help you out. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.